am in Winnipeg. It's a, it's a very dreary day. It's in June. It's on one of the days that the um, Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada was having its first event here in Winnipeg. And I was able to sit in for a while. Um, I got right into the uh, main room right behind here in this theater where the uh, sharing circles are going on. And there are mostly women in the front who seem to be sharing their stories, uh, but there's a lot of people around, many of them Aboriginal. Uh, most of the people, or almost all the people sharing the stories are Aboriginal. And um, this is, because of the residential schools, in which I think the number is something like 150,000 Aboriginal First Nations kids were taken from their homes um, at very young ages as they tried to um, get the Indian out of them and make them better, Know, Western English kids, um, Canadian kids, and so as part of the as part of the um, settlement a year or two ago, the federal government said we will actually have one of these commissions. So they're trying to do it. So I'm in the room. I'm listening. It's very quiet. People are told to turn the cell phones off, of course. And you know what? I, I live in a world, lots of times, where you're supposed to do speeches and everything is supposed to be perfect and wonderful. And and there was nothing scripted here. And there was a moderator and she rarely had to say anything and the microphone would just move from person to person. When someone would speak, there was someone else behind them just to put a hand on the shoulder. And sometimes when, when someone was having more of a difficult time, a uh, person was there to brush a feather over her or just literally wipe away her tears while she was still talking. And you couldn't help but be moved by this. Um, so there were times where you could tell, you know, even in this modern day, things have got to move along. So I'd see the moderator sort of signaling to someone with a headset on, just, just a little something. And she'd go and sit behind the person and tap them a little bit and let them know. And I thought with this one woman, she said she came down here from the northern part of Manitoba. And she came down just to say, I wanted to, to do this, to move on and not be angry anymore. And she said, but you know, she didn't say it in any better way, but she said, you, you know, you, you can't do it in this, in this space of time, but it's a start. You know, there's lots of times when I do these videos and I think I want to put this on. I think I always want to have some message of some kind which says, okay, do this and don't do that. I don't want to do that today. The fact is, this is about listening. I listened the one time this one woman, she was slumped over and I thought, you know, what's she going to say? And she just talked about when she was nine years old, her brother was five years old. Suddenly a plane came, swooped into their community. I'm sure it was a float plane. They got in the plane and they were taken away. And um, I doubt there was many, many people in the room, just like myself, who had a dry eye. But she's explaining how her life was changed forever. This is a matter of listening. And, and I think there's lots of times for many of us, is we think, okay, move on. Just, just move on with your life. Hasn't enough time gone by? Hasn't there been enough money spent? Sitting in that room, I realize there's not enough money to spend. There's not enough time that has gone by. Who knows how long it's gonna be. And just like, it's not all nice and scripted in there, not all going to be nice and scripted on what happens. It's just ruined a lot of people's lives. Many people died early. Many people took their own lives. Years of abuse, alcoholism, drug abuse. It was all talked about in there. This is going to be going on for a while and I think as Canadians we need to tap into that. There's a lot of film that's going on. Um, you can probably uh, watch it on, on some websites or, or watch it in the press. Read the stories. Listen to what's happened to these people. Um, then, then we can move on. The healing is, is, is happening now and it's going to continue. But uh, what happened to Aboriginal Canadians and what continues to happen, it's going to take a long, long time to heal. If you get an opportunity, I hope you do get a chance to pay attention to some of the things that are going on in here. I'll certainly be paying a lot more attention.